Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today is Thursday, September 13th, 2012. I'm Darko. All right, I'm ready to go here. I'm going to cover the Middle East again, so, and uh, the economy. And hopefully tomorrow I can get into the eugenics, um, uh, radiation that's going on, um, stuff with um, basically the environment, and of course, eugenics. Um, unfortunately, it, it does exist, eugenics, uh, but fortunately, I like covering it, as sad as it may be. Um, but I just feel compelled as well to cover these issues as well, because it's just pure propaganda uh, programming to control the masses, and so I'm ready to cover it. So, one of the things I noticed, um, of course, if we're talking about the anti-Islam uh, documentary that was on YouTube. It's actually been on there for, I guess, for almost a month. A month, so... Uh, but it was timed right around 9-11, and uh, we know who's responsible for that. We know who's responsible for this anti-Islam uh, film. So, uh, you know, I wanted to see how the alternative news was covering it and how the mainstream news was covering it, and I noticed uh, one thing, that they're not, they're basically whitewashing it. And here we go, thanks to Obama, the terrorists you used to topple regimes in Egypt, and Libya are now attacking our embassies and this is a good website. I'm not, you know, bashing them, the American dream, but this is how they're covering it. You know, see, I told you so. Along with um, Infowars, killed U.S. ambassador illustrates Obama's disastrous foreign policy in Libya. When I saw this, I kind of laughed. And then, of course, if you go to Occupy Corporatism, it's a pretty good website. Uh, Suzanne Posel, I think that's how you pronounce her name. Uh, she writes most of the articles, and she does a great job. Uh, Israeli-sponsored film sparks false flag attack and man manufactured Islamic threat in Libya. The U.S. ambassador to Libya and three embassy staff employees were killed in a bombing of the Benghazi consulate based on alleged outrage concerning a Zionist-sponsored film. Islamic gunmen stormed the embassy and set fire to the consulate. So I noticed over here uh, in the Infowars article, um, well, this is a video, but uh, there's an article as well, and they were downplaying the fact that he had received donations, millions of dollars, um, from Zionists and that. And then um, this is the only website I saw on alternative news that was covering for what it was, which was a diversion, I think. Uh, the same old tactic to basically pit uh, uh, all the Muslim world against the United States and Muslims against Christians. Uh, U.S. ambassador's death, fruits of U.S. foreign policy, U.S.-backed terrorists in Syria responsible for ambassador's death in Libya. So the U.S. has sworn to make pay uh, those responsible for the death of the U.S. ambassador, Christopher Stevens. In reality, those responsible for Stevens' death are fully armed, funded, trained, and coordinating with NATO special forces in Libya, across North Africa, and in Syria. So the writers had uh, Land Destroyer Report go on and... Uh, right, no one will pay beyond perhaps a wedding party attacked by U.S. drones or a limited liquidation of select terrorist groups that the U.S. created and armed during the 2011's violent overthrow of the Libyan government. Meanwhile, U.S. warships and Marines will swarm around Libya simply to fulfill Western public expectations that something will be done. So something must be done, of course, problem, reaction, solution, same old, same old. And then I saw this little article from Newser for busted in Libya attack. So they already they already caught him. Well, they probably just snatched uh, some dudes off the street, right? Third victim name. Victim was a Navy SEAL from a Boston area suburb. Four people have been arrested for their connection to the protests at the U.S. Consul in Libya that left four Americans dead, including the ambassador. There may be more arrests in the near future as security forces in the country say they have a large group of people in custody and are monitoring others who may be connected to the protest. So the thing about Libya is that they overthrew Gaddafi, and I wrote, I saw on the comment board somebody wrote, um, you know, this is what happens, you know, you can't, you can't combine democracy and Islam, and again, I just kind of laughed, because most of these comments are just, you know, this is based off programming, that's, that's not actually people, that's just people reiterating the program that's been embedded in their, in their brains, they think it's true, uh, but the, but the truth is, is that there's very few real democracies that actually exist not talking about representative democracy where you're represented as a democracy you don't really have a say um in libya they actually did have uh, pretty close to what a real democracy would be and they also had um, a lot of islamists in there so they actually did have that and we destroyed it so you get these western back uh, puppets here uh, that are in the libya right now and the first one uh, actually stepped down uh, last fall and Tripoli, Libya's interim leader, says he's quitting. 
And why? He said because basically it was due to uh, security concerns. Back in October 2011, he was saying uh, that the uh, Prime Minister warned on Wednesday night that Libya could turn into uh, could turn to chaos unless the war ended soon. And then who did they replace him with? Oh, a technocrat. Libya elects a technocrat. Mustaf Abu Shakur is premier. Just to give you a little background, an alumni of the University of Tripoli, he earned a PhD from the United States and worked as an academic and optic engineer. He returned home, I guess you can call it his home, in 2011 to become an advisor to the NTC. And on that note, what do I think? Well, I've mentioned this in yesterday's video, so check them out. But uh, we all know that Natian knew or uh, Natiyahu, if that's how you pronounce his name, uh, wants to, quote, strike Iran. And he's not getting the Western backing that he wanted publicly, right? We know that the, the U.S. and Obama just signed a huge defense co uh, contract, basically, relations uh, contract, that they're gonna keep, we're going to keep uh, center tax dollars to the Zionist regime, uh, no questions asked, and in the name of democracy. Uh, but the, the U.S. just doesn't want to have blood on their hands, right? They have enough. They want to be able to keep the global uh, police force and military industrial complex coming out of uh, the Anglo-Zionist uh, alliance going. They want to keep it going. Um, but uh, he's not being patient enough. And so what, what happens? Well, they release this film. And now everyone's saying, okay, we'll kill Obama, kill Americans. And also Libya, now that they have Marines there, they have drones, they have warships. Uh, remember what I mentioned before, North Africa, it, it's the beginning of the of the transnational terrorist national highway. So into uh, uh, Turkey, Syria area, and now the new possible Kurdistan uh, state area. And that will be, of course, the midway between there and, of course, the Caucasus, where they will wreak havoc on Russia's doorstep. So I'll try to squeeze this, uh, all this information I have for you in this one video, but uh, lately I've just been busted into two videos. I'll uh, just make sure I cover it all and I, I make my points. Um, this is my website, Global Government News, news for the North American Union and beyond. Uh, I just posted a poll up here. I'm the only one that voted, so go in there and check it out. Was the production and coverage of the anti-Muslim film a ploy by the Zionists to incite anger towards the United States for not supporting the Israeli strike on Iran? Go in there and check it out. You can follow by email. and Also, um, I have a language preference there because um, there are a lot of people from different countries uh, tune in to GN GGN. Also in the news archive, you can go all the way back to 2009 to check them out. So finishing up on this point, uh, this is what I've seen, right? They're kind of playing down certain themes, and now they're doing a little damage control about um, about this guy, uh, who he was, who he represented, and now they're just painting him as what? Uh, this is a kind of a hack film, low budget, law enforcement confirms, convict he's a convicted fraudster, so he's just kind of a big loser, right? Uh, and they actually refer to him as a Coptic Christian. Now, I've never heard of that term, and I'm always learning every video that I make what exactly it is. And uh, one of the examples they're, that they're using here is this individual, uh, Rashad uh, Khalifa. The most interesting fact they say about this individual is that he never was a Muslim. He was a Coptic Christian from Egypt opposing as a Muslim, and when uh, Allah sent that wretch to the hellfire, he died a Coptic Christian. So he had aliases, just like this under, other individual. His real name was Richard Khalif, and he was registered as Richard both in Egypt and in America, but at no point in his cursed life did he ever become a Muslim. In order to re establish a cult in America and gain flexibility, the Zionists funded him to establish his following in Tucson, Arizona, paid by the Jews not only to spread his cult in America, but to produce his own uneducated and fully opinionated commentary of the Holy Koran. You look at here, it says the Coptic church, church is an offshoot of the ancient Egyptian Christian church, one of the oldest Christian churches um, in history. So it says here, reveal the Jews are responsible for Coptic church bombing from January 2011. The New Year's Eve suicide bombing at an Egyptian Coptic church that killed 21 people is stoking fears of a new onslaught against Christians by radical Islamists. In response, some radical Islamists are turning to their great boogeyman to deflect attention, the Zionists. In a press TV report, they said that the fresh plot by terrorists to target churches was not only just uh, Mossad, it is an organized Zionist scenario 
aimed at creating a rift between Muslims and Christians. And finishing up on the subject, in California, someone uh, mentioned this to me, California State Assembly passes resolution equating criticism of Israel with anti-Semitism. So now it's happening here in the United States, and it always happens in New York, uh, Florida, um, and California. Those are always the templates, and then it spreads across the country. Um, August 29th, 2012. So it says schools out, but that didn't stop California State Assembly from passing Resolution H.R. 35, a controversial report commissioned by the University of California that accuses students and faculty of contributing to an environment fostering anti-Semitism on campus. Now, a lot of this has to do with people that are protesting against the uh, occupied territories. So, And even the Russians chimed in on what I was talking about, the mainstream media. Russians say anti-U.S. attack is, or in Libya, vindicates their position, saying, I told you so talking about uh, imposing uh, regime change. Committed to all people. We do believe you can use government in a, in a good way. Well, government's the only thing that we all belong to. We're in different churches, different clubs, but we're together as a part of our city or our county or our state and our nation. So there you go. Uh, we're kind of segueing into some Russian news. And what? The DNC video saying what the government is the only thing that we belong to so it's not that the government quote belongs to us it's our government if people actually believe that no you belong to the government and the government is a corporation and it belongs to the elites and they use it as a tool and uh they use it uh, they use it for their own interests i mean i think at heart the elites are actually anarchists and stuff like that but uh they use it against you and, and a lot of people think that it's uh, that it's still a nation state that belongs to them. It's our government, our country. I love how people in the comment boards were saying, oh, we should cut off aid. Well, I guess we know where we can cut our budget to Egypt, you know, because now that Obama's saying, is Egypt our ally or foe? And people think, you know, it's like, okay, did you have a fucking say in aiding Israel, aiding Egypt? Egypt? Did you? No, you didn't. You didn't have a say in, in aiding them to begin with. So what gives you the idea or the belief that you're going to be able to cut off, you have some kind of democratic say. You don't. And that's what is called engineering consent. And it does make me sick because people are na naive to believe that, that they have a say. So they're going to go off, and they're going to peddle their little asses to the voting booths, and they're going to vote for uh, whoever. It doesn't really matter, right? Uh, Russian ships displayed at DNC tribute to vets. On the last night of the Democratic National Convention, retired Navy four-star took the stage to pay tribute to veterans behind him on a giant screen. The image of four hulking warships reinforced his patriotic message, but there was a big mistake in the stirring backdrop. Backdrop: Those were Russian warships, so maybe that's a little, uh, a little um, something they're telling. But in fact, on August 15th, undetected Russian nuclear sub was patrolling the Gulf of Mexico. They have Russian warships wrapping up their Atlantic mission. This was at the end of August, August 29th. Yeah, the Department of Defense confirming Russian troops to conduct terror drills inside the United States from April 27th, so almost in May. And there's other people that have already said that there's Chinese and Russian troops already amassing on the borders and inside the United States. So I can't tell you for sure what's going on here, but I'm keeping an eye on it. Russia said to conduct surveillance flyover to inspect Canada's military industrial infrastructure. Why would they allow uh, post-USSR or Soviet communist a country to do this. Well, they're communists themselves. If you check out Yuri Bre uh, Brezmanov's uh, documentary, he actually says that the people at the BBC or CBC uh, were more revolutionary to the ideals of uh, Marx and Lenin than uh, than he was than back in Russia. So just like the United States, they were actually fighting with the communists in World War II. That's that's the unfortunate truth of it. It was that when people fought in World War II, they were fighting for communism. So we're talking about Russian troops in the United States. Then you have U.S., Russia, Norway, and joint naval drills. What? With Norway. So it is, like, is it a common threat that they're going to be uh, fighting against, i.e. something, a threat coming from space, like Von Braun was saying and warning people on his deathbed about? Or does this have to do with the Ar Arctic and uh, oil and stuff? Ice-breaking U.S. oil drilling starts as nations mull changed Arctic. This article is from September 10th. On the same day that U.S. scientists reported that the summer sea ice in the Arctic had shrunk to its lowest level in history, high-powered group of politicians, oil industry execs, ship shipping magnates, and investors gathered to discuss how best to exploit their good fortune. So is it global warming? Is it HARP? Is it pole shift what is it? a new rotation of u.s soldiers arrive in kosovo talking about 5600 multinational troops russian troops have prepared for combat operations in the north caucasus 
U.S. military base in Uzbekistan is to counter Russia in Central Asia. And the EU is closely observing the situation in Georgia, talking about the elections. They're even going to send observers, such as Larry King, who will most likely support a Western-backed puppet. Thank you.